Hello all, just to provide some background on who I am. Perspective, I'm Doby, I'm the guild master of Nason. I've rated a high level in WoW ever since Miss Bandaria, farming Molten Core 52 times a year whenever it came out, and I'm still here farming Mythic and Miradrasil. Our guild has been rating at the top 100 level for a few expansions now, and we also do it at a very modest, modest nine hours per week. My goal in writing this post is to provide some insight into some of the problems we now faced in WoW as a Mythic rating guild, and to reflect on the state that it's in. My hope is that this helps paint a clearer picture to Blizzard and what will ultimately lead to improvements. Our guild really loves raiding, but there are quite a few things that we hope can be improved. Okay. Um, uh, to preface a few of these topics, what we, uh, we may be what many may consider elite. However, I do believe if the improvements are made to these issues, all of raiding will improve. The pace and structure of raids. As well as transition to a seasonal model, there has been an inherent move towards the homogenous content cadence and structure. True. The most obvious expansion at expansion level, even whenever Ian recently said it's the typical forex. Bro, I'm so glad that he brought this up. Bro, this was such a disappointment. Oh, wow. You're going to get four zones, eight dungeons, and one raid. I don't think this is a bad thing, but I also don't believe it's a good thing. Why is that? It's too predictable. Yeah, it's fucking boring. Absolutely. I also believe that it inhibits innovation and creativity. Creativity in one aspect. I don't know How about any aspect. I mean, fuck. Perhaps that the, the uh, lore doesn't need to sing fit a uh, single size of content, and doing so may lead to content while in aggregate maybe a certain size, but be represented by any smaller size of raids, like three zones, six dungeons, and three raids. Not all zones are the same size. Exactly. Remember whenever we used to get one or two boss raids, where did those go? Why don't those exist anymore? Why haven't we seen anything like SSC and TK be released at the same time? Yes, we're aiming for a five to six month content model. So it's uh, so we have to right size, but why not have two five boss raids released simultaneously? Great question. Actually, great question. Yes, true. Uh, why not a Magtheridon, a Gruul Slayer, and a five-boss raid? The lore is so narrowly focused on a singular issue that we've lost creative exploration of content var of varied content structure. We got Crucible of Storms, but the timing is what really killed the raid. It was too close to the end of the tier. That's probably true. Additionally, not only is every raid just 9 to 11 bosses, we basically need to have the same set of bosses every single raid. Do we always need a patchwork boss? Do we always need a council boss? It's become very formulaic, which is continually less exciting or interesting. He's totally right. He's fucking right about this too. Does a raid have to tie into some massively important piece of lore, or can there just be a tough dragon hanging out somewhere? Why aren't there any hard world bosses anymore? Well, I, I think that it's yeah, very hard to do that. But overall, yeah, why can't we get a challenging world boss that isn't looking for group? Farm no longer provides the benefits that it once did. Once upon a time, farming the raid meant that you were passively nerfing the raid every week to go through incremental power gains. This is no longer the case. We've reached 90% of the maximum power by the time that we get to the last boss now. This equates to a, fi a hard final few bosses, but it also means that they never get any easier to farm. We acquire gear and then some small amount of power from the farm, but nothing meaningfully nerfs content over time. Yeah, and it would feel good, right? Whenever you finish the content and you can come in and just beat the shit out of it. Yeah, absolutely. It's awesome. There used to be a benefit that if we farmed full biz, it would give us a small advantage in the next tier. That doesn't really exist anymore. Yeah, it's, it's right. Instead, what exists is endless Mythic Plus farming sessions of the first week of the tier that replaces everything but our tier sets. This is pretty toxic, frankly, and I feel like it feels bad to put in the, in the months of farming only for it to be useful for clearing higher keys sooner. So I will go a step farther. I do not think that there should be any catch-up gear except for maybe a couple of pieces of gear like in, you know, Isle of Queldonis, etc. In, B in BC. I hate the fact that there is catch-up gear inside of an expansion. I think it's fucking stupid. Every single raid should be relevant for the entire expansion. And you say, oh, that's old content. No, it's not if you're a new player. Vaulton was new content for me as a Lost Ark player in the year 2022, and I fucking loved it. The idea that, oh, well, it's old content. Get the fuck out of here. You should have to go through the raids and then do that. Like, I think that going through the different raids and then being able to progress into the new one feels a whole lot better than just getting reset every patch. It sucks. They should just delete everybody's gear every patch. I understand the goal was to leave the old stuff behind, but that's only ever really been an issue for trinkets and rare items. 
Well, who says it's an issue? The people that play the game professionally? Who gives a fuck? What the fuck are we talking about here? Oh my god, there's an Arcano Crystal that you can get that's really good. Who cares? Wait, what is it? Like, why, why is this even a factor? It's crazy! In terms of item level, the jump between tiers is a really disincentivizing farm. Bro, fucking true. So fucking true, I cannot even believe it. Absolutely. It's massively disincentivizing. Why would you want to go and farm all this stuff only for it to get deleted in the next tier? Like, you're, you're, it's, you're basically, you're playing an expansion every five months. Farm is mostly for selling carries for gold and collecting mounts now. Sometimes we get a mount that everyone wants, but uh, but the gear is sadly way less useful for the next tier than it used to be. Yeah, exactly. The tuning problem. I'll, I'll preface this by saying it's hard to get this right. It requires some really good testing to dial in with players who are really good at pressing their buttons. Now, I think it requires relatively good understanding of class dynamics to optimize. Previously, I mentioned that we are getting the ultimate or penultimate boss with roughly 90% of our potential power. This was not the case years ago. Back in Nighthold, after two months of farm, Gul'dan was falling over. What's going on now? Well, I'm going to tell you what's going on. They're tuning the bosses for people that play the game professionally. That's the problem. Whenever the raid comes out, it's tuned for people that play the game professionally. This is stupid. I think every single time that Blizzard has to retune a boss, it is a failure. You should never have to retune a boss. The boss should be released in a way that is fair and fun. And if people kill it quickly, so be it. And if people can't kill it, then get better gear. If they fix raiding, then they kill the race to world first in Blizzard's mind. Well, who gives a shit? I mean, what? That doesn't even matter. Like that's a that's a streamer thing. It's not that's not a Blizzard. That's a streamer thing. Like that's not re, It's not like most people that play retail WoW don't even know what that is. Like, what, literally, a thousand people care about World First. Yeah, people watch it. Yeah, for sure they're going to watch it. But, like... But what? What is this? Why does Race to World First need to last two weeks? If it takes a couple of days, it's fine. Yeah, like, who decided that Race to World First has to last for two resets? Who decided this? What? Why? The race is tuned for Liquid and Echo only. Yes. There is no reason that these bosses are tuned as hard as they are. If you look at the amount of nerfs that, for example, the Jailer got between, like, whenever it got released and whenever uh, Dragonflight came out, there were, like, I'm not even kidding you, like, a dozen nerfs on this boss. And they were, like, 20 and 30% nerfs in some cases. What the fuck is going on? What is this? Like, why is this even happening? The big component is tier sets. Tier sets normally adding 10 to 15 percent of player power. Considerable power jump disrupts the linear difficulty and curve pretty substantially. This is why during the first week of raid, you may have struggled on Nara, but by the second week, she's falling over without much of an issue. This uh, naturally feels to way feeling that tuning was way under on the first few bosses, and you're likely to hit a wall towards the end of the raid. Uh, the linear scaling continues to uh, continues on to the end of the raid. However, the tuning for the last bosses has really been dialed up. I think this is because of the race to world first. I think it is. I'm going to say it, and I know some WoW players are going to get mad. I think that the race to world first and Blizzard's fixation on creating competitive content has ruined the game. That's what I, I genuinely think. I, th I think that it has ruined the game in every single facet. I don't think that it's like, oh, it's been bad in like this one circumstance. No, I think that it has totally ruined the game. It's ruined PvP. It's ruined raiding. It's ruined Mythic Plus. It's ruined everything. It even ruined the core DNA of the game whenever they removed the AoE, or sorry, they made an AoE cap because people were killing and AoEing things down too much in the MDI. Why are we even thinking about competitive gameplay in an MMO? I'm sorry, but if you want to play a competitive game, get the fuck off of an MMO.
Stop playing an MMO competitively. It's not a competitive game. It's not designed to be that way. It's like you're not going to go play chess and try to make it a first-person shooter. It's not the way these games are made to do. Games more often doing it. MMOs are com cooperative. Well, they're competitive, but they're not competitive in the same way. So, yeah, the tuning for the last boss has been dialed up. I think Race World first. Yeah, so PvP is garbage. And the reason why is because the people that play it all the time have increased the skill cap so high that a normal player, it's completely unapproachable to them. Battlegrounds are completely worthless. Nobody does RBGs. Um, world PvP is completely fucking dead. Every Mythic Plus dungeon has like eight different levels of metagaming in it. Because nobody wants to fail a key and have it downgraded. And be locked into 30 minutes of, of bad gameplay. It sucks. Being competitive isn't the issue. That's the point of PvP. Professionally competitive is a whole different thing, though. Well, balancing the game. So, think about... Okay, so... Let me think about it like this. Okay. So, this is all of the players that do PvP... This is all the players that do competitive PvP. And this is all the players that do Arena. Okay? So, what I mean by that is... Um, whenever you make Arena the defining variable that PvP is balanced around, you are making balance changes for the minority of the players. MMOs are not... Like, I think Arena has always been dog shit. It's always been bad, because that's not the way the game's designed. It's never been designed that way. RBGs always should have been the focus. And, like, larger battlegrounds always should have been the focus. Arena? What the fuck is Arena? What is this? Is that an olive? It clearly is. Wrath of the Lich King arenas were a blast. Yeah, but think about how much better an RBG would have been in Wrath. I would have loved that. So that's my point. 5v5 was sick. I've been saying this since BC, yeah. And uh, anyway, let's look at the rest of these. The unfortunate, the uh, most annoying problem is the reliance on nerfs. Unfortunately, this appears to have co become uh, common practice. I understand the need for putting on a spectacle and for these bosses to not fall over in the face of massive gearing blitz. I don't. Within 24 hours, tons of people had completely demolished and beat Elden Ring. Does that make Elden Ring bad? What's the logic in this? The longer, like, who the fuck thinks this? It's just, it's such a stupid way of thinking. Like, this is, again, it's like the, like, the, such a massive fucking, like, elitist shit with WoW. It is so fucking cringe. Yeah, he was doing so well too. Yeah, I don't know what to say. If it's for engagement metrics, devs are making a game for investors, not players. Well, I, I, then why are they making it for only a handful of the players then? I don't, I don't know why. So... Preach's video said the Race to World First guilds depend on a long race or they can't exist. Well, the Susan Express depends on selling gold or it can't exist. Does that mean that Blizzard should let people sell gold? What? What does that mean? Like, so because this, because they've decided to make a culture around this and make a, a career around clearing a raid quickly, that means that the entire game has to be contrived in a way that, that makes sense for them monetarily? What the fuck are you thinking? It's just like such a brain dead thing. Like, what is wrong with Blizzard? Oh my god, why are they doing this? Oh. I'm going to lose my fucking mind, man. I don't get it. It's a basement mentality? Yes. I think they're agreeing with you. They're saying it's bad design to design the race. No, I know that they're, they're agreeing with me. What I'm saying is that I think that Blizzard is actually designing the game for race to world first. I genuinely believe that because if they weren't, they wouldn't need to nerf every boss eight times. 
Why is it that whenever you release a boss, that boss is not in its final condition and it needs to be nerfed 50 times? It's because you fucked up. That's why. Yeah, like that's it. You so what are you doing nerfing the boss under it shouldn't have shouldn't have been released balanced? Like what's the like I don't understand. Like and this is what's so crazy to me is like I'll 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 play other games. I'll play other games and I'll come back and I'll play WoW again. And I'll be thinking to myself, wait, why is it like this? Well, because it's always been like this. It's just the way it is. But why? What? Why? Why? What's? What is this? It's just like, it's so crazy to me. Final Fantasy fourteen, no nerfs. Pog, I don't know. Maybe they do some nerfs. I'm not sure. Why the fuck isn't there a power creep buff like ICC if they're intent on this design? There should not be anything like that. The boss should be released. And as you get better gear, it is easier to kill the bosses. Any time that Blizzard has to nerf a boss, it's because Blizzard fucked up. That's all there is to it. I don't think anyone cares about Final Fantasy XIV. Well, some people care about it, right? Anyway, let's read what his points are, right? Um, the most annoying problem is the reliance on nerfs. Unfortunately, this appears to be common practice. Here's why I think it should stop. It's frustrating. Have you ever progressed on a boss, got close, and then had it nerfed exactly the next Tuesday? How did that feel? I'll tell you, it feels absolutely awful. No, it doesn't. You get the loot. I only rated for loot. I don't care about progression or anything like that. I want the stuff. Uh, worse yet, the nerfs forced a change of strategy and actually caused you to regress. Suddenly, you were some 10% on Tendril, but now you're relearning orbs and you're back to wiping in phase one. All that time spent and your closest competing guilds are now caught up to you. It's unreliable. We're praying and hoping for nerfs, and sometimes they come out and sometimes they don't. Or maybe they don't nerf the fight the way you think they should have, and they just change the strategies without making the boss easier. We're at the whims of a company that may or may not be preoccupied with their own development efforts to tune a fight down. It's unnatural. Unnatural in the sense that it's not something that is simply accounted for naturally through one or more systems in the game, whether that's farming gear, an explicit mechanism controlled by the players, or some passive effect, like the ICC buff, I'm saying. So... This is what I think they should do. They should stop making the raids really fuck. They should... Like, the way that a person who's played the game for 15 years is going to beat a boss should not even be calculated into how good the boss is or the quality of the boss. This is something that should be totally fucking, like, separate in every single way. I was in a rank 7 guild for a long time. They agree to make the raid easier and not give crap about world first. Yeah. The difficulty makes for aspirational content? No, though. But how can you aspire to do something that, that doesn't exist anymore? Like, if it's aspirational content, then why not leave the aspiration in place? Because, like... For example, you're not really, like, doing, like, right now, you go into Retail WoW, and you go clear ICC, and you kill the Lich King in one attack, right? Is that aspirational content anymore? No, it's not. Why? Because it's been nerfed by the game. So, whenever you play the game, and you beat the boss after it's been nerfed seven times, it doesn't mean the same thing as it did whenever you beat it, and it hadn't been nerfed seven times. Only maybe once. You should never have nerfs. That's my perspective. You should never have nerfs. If you have to do a nerf, you fucked up. That's it. No nerfs. In Old War, you can make a fight more difficult by removing the aid of an NPC, adding a mechanic to the boss with some mechanism in the boss room. That wasn't required to defeat the boss, but it did provide rare achievements few would have. Yes, these were great. And um, it could also provide additional loot as an incentive. There are many options here, none of which are currently being experimented with. The last time they did that was in Mists of Pandaria. I believe part of the reason why hard modes no longer exist is because there is a whopping four raid difficulties right now, which is something uh, which sort of achieves something similar. We traded a creative and natural mechanism for the game world for something artificial in pursuit of varied difficulty and broader access to game content. It's not necessarily bad, but it has introduced more problems. The four raid difficulties is also what's driving up those large item level gaps between tiers, the complexity of which bleeds into many other systems. He's right. 
Blizzard is trying to t fit two raid tiers of difficulty into Mythic, and it's not working. He's right. He's right about this. Didn't a large majority of guilds not even enter Naxx in vanilla? I remember a lot of guilds didn't clear Black Temple until they nerfed it for the prep for Wrath. This is back whenever the game was designed as a core MMO, but the raids were still inaccessible back then. Well, the reason why a lot of people didn't do Nax is because it wasn't worth the time because BC was going to invalidate everybody's gear, which is ironically kind of the argument of what I was saying about why it's not fun to progress in one patch and then have the gear replaced because that's effectively the reason why people didn't raid Nax as much. It's because the amount of investment and time that you had to do it versus the reward wasn't really that important and it wasn't that meaningful. And I think also like a raid being inaccessible, a raid should be inaccessible as a default, but it shouldn't become more accessible artificially because that's obviously a balance problem. Like, what I mean is that if the intent of the raid, like Nax Ramos, is to be extremely in inaccessible and very hard, then it should start like that. You shouldn't just make it easier and easier and easier over time. Because if you have to do that, that means that you clearly missed the mark whenever you made the game. Let's see here. Uh, raid composition is becoming extremely restrictive. I think this is commonly understood now, but it's worth reiterating in the context of the other issues being outlined. The typical retort is just being a player. Optimization only matters for world first guilds. This implies it's a self-inflicted problem. However, it certainly will be. However, the reality is raids are presented and tuned around such optimization. Further, because, uh, what's this here? Because farming is so diminished in effectiveness, the guild, uh, the fact that we only rely on nerfs has led to guilds inevitably prescribing what is the most optimal because what that's generally the easiest way to progress. Keep in mind, this is in the context of progressing at a certain pace, generally Hall of Fame. And if we were not reliant on nerfs and tuning was not as strict, then the flexibility would be more possible. Thus, if you're a guild above the 200 to 300, you're unlikely to feel these issues as much, but that doesn't mean that they're very real for hundreds of guilds. True nature of raid buffs and now multiplicative player empowerment has forced guild rosters to shrink over the last few years you consider playtime equally it means you're not going to be able to maintain a roster of 26 plus very easily anymore um i don't really know a whole lot about this to be honest with you like uh i think it really just depends on the guild uh but every end raid tier uh has had additional nerfs since tbc since they want to make sure that any skill player can see all the bosses well, I think really, so like, Supertees, what you're talking about is they did do a lot of nerfs at the end of Burning Crusade, but I think that those nerfs were primarily the outcome of better, um, what do you call it? They were primarily the outcome of better class damage. So, for example, like, I remember back whenever I did, uh, like, I, I can show you and, and, and compare it, right? Because, like, I, I have it in, like, this video. And, like, so if you look at the damage that we were doing... Can I find, like, Sunwell or something like that? I think this is actually, like, pre, pre-patch. pre Um... Yeah, this is it. And so, anyway, like, the damage that we did on this fight, like, killing Brutalis... Players were doing, like, 30 to 40% more damage with Wrath of the Lich King talents. Like, that's really the reason. Like, the bosses got nerfed a little bit, but it was primarily the talents. The talents were so massive and so powerful, they took people that were doing, like, 1,100 DPS, and they started making them do, like, 3,000. It was crazy. Arms War was so much better and more fun. Yeah. That was the big reason why I think that those raids were easier. Not even because of the numbers nerfs. And also, Blizzard nerfed those fights because they knew that retuning all the classes would be hard to do. And so I don't even think that they were necessarily nerfed as a as a reason to like make it easier. I think they didn't know what was going to happen. Divine Storm, yeah. They're hyper tuned and uh, tweaked rating. Trinity roll and class experience make all the roles feel similar or play the same. And also, like I'll tell you again, like this is again probably my most unpopular WoW opinion is that I think they should go back to forty man raids. I do. I think they should actually go back to 40-man raids. Because if you had a 40-man roster, you would have less less trouble in raid composition. But why? Because it's cool. Yeah, that's it. Higher chance of more dumbasses in your raid, though? Then just make the raid easier, so it's not as big of a deal. I mean, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, that that's it. It would be even easier to funnel loot. Yeah, I mean, sure, but it's already easy to do that. 
You said multiple times that 25 man raids helped the game. Um, I don't know. You'd have to look at like what the context of that was. Uh, big disagree as a former guildmaster in classic. Shit was aids to organize. Yeah, but like this guy's just posting about how it's aids to organize now. So like, what's really the difference? Uh, it's just a different kind of aids. You know, like he's having HIV, you're having aids. Like, what's really worse, right? I mean, what are we talking about here? Th these are all bad. Uh, 40 man, uh, two difficulties only. Bosses having hard modes activated in dungeons. Yeah. Uh, the user interface should level up. An encounter design itself has been leveling up. The bomb mechanic made famous for, by Holandris and later utilized in Farak is a great example of continuing innovation. Other examples were the addition of the energy bar to encounters, player symbols, and animated arrows for directional beams. Uh, the ping system is additionally a great in-game system. However, all of these except the encounter energy bar are improvements to the game world and not the user interface. The core of any encounter is your interface. Um, overall, I will also give, uh, community is so competitive that even a 40-man raid group, they'd min-max and stack whatever class does the most damage and mandatory buffs. Look at classic stacking warriors. You are absolutely right, Supatis. And so the way that they need to make the community less, less, dif uh, less competitive is by disabling every single add-on and every single thing that reads information from the game. Get rid of all of it. Get rid of the ability for these tools to read the information from the game. Just on a base level. Like, view them as being against the terms of service. Because another reason why this happens is because the players that, are, that have all of these advantages become, it's like a force multiplier for, like, their skill. So they're not 100% better than you, they're 200% better than you. Because not only are they better at the game and they're better at doing the rotation and everything, but on top of that, they also have the advantage of just having these add-ons that give them a level of awareness that's unnatural. Do you see what I'm saying? So, like, they are 120 or 150% better than you because that 20 to 50% on top of the 100% is from add-ons. Call-out bots are the worst? Bro, if you go and you watch a rating stream in Retail WoW and then you look at a Guantanamo Bay torture experiment, you're going to hear the same air horns, the same sounds, and the same noises. If you want to fucking put somebody through torture, have them do a raid. It's crazy. Three, two, run away, little girl, run away. Holy fuck, guys. What is this? What's this? Tr what trash is this? Like, how the fuck did this happen? So, yes, my opinion. Delete every single add-on. Every single one. Delete them. Make it completely undoable. DBM deleted. Recount deleted. Details gone. Um, all the things deleted. Um, Mogget deleted. Uh, let's see. Macros. Some macros. Probably, you know, li limit functionality of macros. Bag on. Deleted. Clean slate. Yep. And then just make the game better. I remember discovering boss mechanics by noticing weird sound effects at certain timings in ZA Thunder Troll. Had a crash down before the massive AoE damage, but now everything's pre-solved and expected to be handheld. You're totally right. And there were those little tells that you'd have, and then also whenever the boss would have a mana bar, sometimes whenever his mana bar reached a certain point, that would mean, oh, that means he's about to do this. So, yeah. I use zero add-ons this whole season, 9 out of 9, and 2,500 myth because rating. I didn't say that you can't be successful with add-ons, but if you had add-ons, you'd be more successful. I mean, what do you think? You're really better than the people that play in, in Limit and Echo? They're using add-ons. We, we think you're, you're better than they are. You're not. Add-ons just make you better at the game. That's why the best players in the world use them. <laughs> anyway. Um, as we know, a core encounter for your, anything that is your interface. Yes, need to spread six uh, yard bombs. Neltharion, good luck self-organizing without any tools. Need to assign 20 players around for rock, for bombs, for random color assignments in six seconds. Good luck self-organizing without any tools. The problem is that you should never need to organize this because these, these encounters and these mechanics are way too invested and way too involved to have ever existed in the first place. This should have never happened in the first place. There should have never been a fight like this anyway. The only reason that they have that is because they're constantly in this arms race with people that want to play the game as a job. 
you need to assign 20 players around bosses for random color assignments? Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, you should just disable all add-ons. A note on legendaries. The acquisition of legendaries has been a subject of a lot of criticism. I think two legendaries in Dragonflight haven't really felt legendary at all. Personally, I believe these items need to be more difficult to build, potentially taking weeks, but easier to begin building. Really, what makes an item legendary is the activities that went into building it. Historically, items like Shadowmourne and Terragosa felt truly legendary. The biggest issue with acquisition currently is that starting a journey has a minuscule drop rate. Here's the problem. You want to figure out how to fix legendaries? It's simple. Make them drop only from the highest boss on the highest difficulty. That's it. Problem solved. Because at that point, it doesn't matter how good they are. Because whenever you get that item, it's already going to be at the pinnacle level. And you won't need to worry about it. No more. Yes, welfare legendaries become a requirement for raiding. Do you guys remember back in Hellfire Citadel, for example, whenever you wanted to raid, but you didn't have the ring, so nobody would play with you? That's what happens whenever you give people welfare legendaries. Like, yeah, the cloak and mop was the same thing. Super Tease, you're right. Yeah, you remember that. And it's like, remember, if you didn't have that, you weren't getting invited. You weren't even getting invited to Heroic. Like, everybody needed to have that. Yeah, Welfare Legendary. What a fucking, like, what a, uh, uh, an, an oxymoron. What is this? Yeah, so I, I totally agree. Um, now, in general, with the Legendaries, I think that, le you want to hear, like, these are the good Legendaries, okay? Here are good Legendaries. Atiesh, greatest legendary of all time. Wargwaves. Kind of interesting since they added Sunwell afterwards. And I felt like people kind of had to have Wargwaves, especially because every boss in Sunwell was a demon. And Wargwaves gave a, uh, a bonus to demons. Um, I would say those are the two best. Those are the Thordial, you know, like the bow from um, from Kill Jaden. The problem is that this is what, and this is the problem that Blizzard has. Is there a design, Thunder Fury? No. No. Uh, the way that it was added into the game was problematic, and it created bad uh, bad interactions. Yeah, I would actually uh, totally disagree with that. I just missed that. I almost missed that there. Yeah, well, in what regard? Because it becomes expected that you have Thunder Fury to tank by the time that you get into AQ40. That's the problem. That's what happens. Is so, And this is what happens in the game. Is that once something is existing in the game, people get uh, excluded for it. I think I changed uh, Legendary's mob because it felt bad uh, not being the player who got the Legendary in the guild. Making it so everybody gets it and it's not special and nobody cares. I will remember the day that the guy in my guild got the first Dragon Wrath, and the first Dragon Wrath happened on my server. I don't even remember whenever I got my legendary cloak, and I remember I got one lottery legendary from like a, uh, you know, what's it, what's it called? Um, uh, the Valhalla, uh, the Stormheim reputation, uh, the, it was something Val something, uh, in, in Legion. I got it out of that box, which was really good. Uh, Valinir, yeah, the, no, it was like a faction box. And so anyway, yeah, if you're still reading this, my apologies for the link. There's a lot to cover. The intent here is to see improvements with raiding as it has become stale and systematic issues have crept in and not only limit the potential for raiding, but also threaten guilds and communities that wish to continue engaging in this form of content. So uh, let me go ahead uh, and say that this is probably one of the best and, and the, this is the most true and real post I've read on the WoW forums in probably five years. Everything that he says, I agree with. I think that he's right about literally everything. Yeah, this guy knows. So, again, how would I fix WoW rating? I would never make bosses that had to be nerfed unless it was an absolute, like, worst case scenario. I would release bosses and they would be at a defined difficulty. And the players in the guilds that could cure, to, excuse me, they could clear them quickly, will clear them quickly, and good for them. I would remove the ability to have any add-ons at all. In any capacity, in any way. I would remove anything else that would automate gameplay and increase a player's awareness beyond what they would naturally have access to as an average player. 
I would make it to where every single spell effect did not overlap and mold in with the same color of the ground. There would never be another uh, red floor with red circles that you have to avoid. There would never be a green floor with light green circles. I would completely remove that. I would also double the raid size to 40 players and then make the raids a lot easier. Because I think that would be more fun for more people. I understand that this is an unpopular opinion, but that's what I would do. Uh, I think that's a better experience for an MMO. And I think that if you want competitive gameplay, you shouldn't be playing an MMO. And also, people complain about negative frame rates. Has it ever occurred to you that the game being over-designed is the reason why you have negative frame rates? Maybe they should stop over-designing the game, and then you wouldn't have that problem. The game is massively over-designed. And I think the truth is that with WoW in general, it is massively over-designed to the point to where it's completely inaccessible. Like, I couldn't imagine a new player trying to get into retail WoW. Having less add-ons, but hogging the CPU might help? Yeah, yeah. Having no add-ons would help a lot. Yeah, imagine how much better your frame rate would be if you didn't have to run 50 different add-ons. Get rid of IO and parses on top of that. I would totally remove the ability for you to parse out uh, parse out damage in the game. As somebody who was a meter whore, like, I used to love doing that. Like, if you go back and you look at Warcraft logs, this is many, many years ago. Look up Asmongold. And way, way, way... Oh, this is a guild? Wait, why is it a guild? Um, you know, there we go. Yeah, if you go all the way back to Legion, whenever I used to raid, I did pretty fucking well, guys. I used to raid a lot. And I had a lot of fun. I like doing this all the time. But the truth is that this type of gameplay was not necessarily good for the game. Legion was good. Yeah, exactly. So, after seeing this happen for these this many years, I think they should just totally get rid of this. DPS meters is everything in WoW? Yeah, it is. You barely can have a guild with 20 active members without having roster issues, let alone having 40? No, that's not the problem. You See, you misunderstand the problem. The problem is that nobody wants to raid. Nobody wants to raid because raiding isn't fun. If you make raiding more fun and more rewarding, you won't have roster issues. That's the issue. Like, for example, you should never have to run back to a boss. You should always respawn in front of the boss. This idea and metagame of light protection is fucking stupid. And anybody who thinks that it's good for the game is a fucking idiot. Like, it's, it's not even a question. Mythic Raid really sucks compared to Mythic Boss. Yes, it, it, you're just a fucking moron if you think that. Uh, food buffs not persisting through death. Why, why not? Why does a flask persist but a food buff doesn't? Logically. There's no real logical reason. Food buffs should also persist through death. Like Final Fantasy has all of this? Yes, and, and the game is better because of that. So, uh, the only time that I, I do raids is soloing content for two expansions ago to get good transplant. Can you define what's good for the game? What is best for the largest amount of people that play the game or would play the game? I think it's healthy for the average player base. Kind of funny, a lot of your hot takes on what WoW should be doing is what Final Fantasy XIV already does. Yeah, because I think they do it better than WoW. And after playing the game, I realized that. It's that simple. Have macros gone too far? Okay, I'll look at this. Welcome back to another quick video. In today's video, I want to show you guys a crazy discovery I just made. Uh, Valentine's Day, just woke up, just having a nice morning coffee with my fiance, and I opened up my boy Venruki's stream. I noticed he's playing some solo shuffle on Holy Pally, and I see this rogue that he's playing verse do something kind of sus here. So watch this really quick. I'm just going to play this. You'll see this rogue. He does like a step kidney uh -huh. and instantly hooks back in to the fight. And this is... Definitely kind of crazy, kind of like cracked uh -huh. to see these mechanics. So I was a little bit kind of iffy about it. And I kept watching. I was kind of like half paying attention. Sure. And then I actually noticed Van Rookie pointed something out. So I actually went back here and he uh, showed a replay of this. But basically in one of the earlier rounds, the rogue did the same thing, but he did it with a kick. So watch this. I'm going to put this kind of slow here. 
Um, Venerky's over on the side here. He puts up a Tears Deliverance. And then I think it's right after this, he starts casting a rep. So I'm going to put this in slow motion. And I want you guys to just watch this enemy rogue, okay? He's over here with Subterfuge up. Watch what he does here. Rep starts getting cast. The rogue step kicks and hooks back in. But the hook happens basically instantly. So he's already hooking back in as he does a step kick. Yeah. Now, this is something that is extremely weird to me. Because, you know, I am a rogue main. And, you know, whenever I think of what just happened, uh -huh. I think of this, okay? If I have my hook facing over here, and then I step a target, my hook is now going to go over here. Because basically, your hook is based off where your camera um, angle is and your position. Sure. And Shadow Steps yeah, how do you do that. that? So I don't really understand how this works. And then apparently, some people in Venruki's chat were saying that this guy's not a cheater. He's just using a macro. That's how I found out about an insanely broken macro that you guys definitely should not use you probably all are going to use it but i'm going to show you guys this because it's too crazy to not show you this is complete insanity okay here's the macro it's got a basic show tool tip kick it's got a bunch of shenanigans going on here which is basically just a focus kick and then it has an at cursor grappling hook so what the at cursor does is that's just a little macro um that you can use with spells that have like this little green circle where you like place them somewhere all this uh, at cursor macro does is make it so the circle doesn't come up if you press the macro it'll automatically just grapple you to wherever your mouse sure, is sure got it so what this macro does is here i'll pretend that this guy over here let's make this guy moon make him uh -huh. my focus and then we'll say that this guy's skull and i'm attacking skull right so if i hit this macro i have it on a mouse uh scroll key mine right now shift mouse wheel down yeah all i'm gonna do is i'm going to have my mouse near my target right here and i'm just gonna spam shift mouse wheel down and watch what happens it literally step kicks moon and hooks me back on target. Now, if this isn't the most broken macro I've ever seen for Rogue, I've lost my mind. Like, this is... Oh, my this God. This should be illegal. I don't know how this is a thing, and I also don't know how I didn't know about it. So, obviously, you can assume um, you could make the exact same macro here. And if you just replace kick with kidney shot... My cat's meowing. I don't know if you can hear that. Yeah. If you just replace kick with kidney shot, you can do an entire second macro, which basically does the exact same thing. You could hypothetically do it with cheap shot as well. You could also do it with blind if someone's at a range. As long as you're in step range of your target and you have kick or whatever CC, this macro just kind of sends you out of the fight this and sends you back so in. Dumb. I just want to do a disclaimer. I don't think this is actually a super good macro. I think it has a niche use because as outlaw, you know, hook and step is like all of your mobility, maybe like blade rush. So right. just shoving it to get like one kick, you all your mobility, probably not worth it a lot of the time. Um, but it is a crazy macro. I had to share this with you guys. Um, I'm not going to drag the video. I just wanted to show you guys this macro. Let me know what you think about this in the comments. Have macros gone too far? This is complete insanity to me. I can't believe it works. I'll show you one more time what it looks like, guys. So here's Moon. Same attack and skull. My mouse is right here, and I'm going to spam the macro. It just does a it's step kick, a and it hooks much. me back on target. It, yeah, it's, it's complete insanity. But yeah, yo, like the video if you guys enjoyed. Um, yeah. Don't forget to come stop on my stream. I stream every single day at twitch.tv slash palomore. Um, but let me know what you guys think in the comments. Thank you so much for your time. Hope you guys have a great day. Happy Valentine's Day, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Well, shit. Yeah, all right, there it is. So you're basically the Flash. Yeah, this is why Arena's dead. Yeah, no, you're right. This is This is the reason why Arena is dead. It's because of content like this. Yeah, that's a good video. Great video, by the way. This guy, like, really well explained it. Like, that's that's awesome. Uh, it's automating. It's been around for seven years. Why do you think so many people have jet fast reaction time? Duh. Well, it's just not a good thing. That's my point. Yeah, Arena hasn't been around. It hasn't been good since, like, WAD. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's really ever been a, a great thing, right? Uh, I'm an old player. Uh, OG Ascent and Vanilla World First Rag. Tried to come back in Mythic Plus, and raiding was so intimidating, I just gave up on the game and doing those things. <laughs> on Thrall server, I remember my friend Jeff used to always get all... Uh, I think his name was the warrior tank that you guys had, Alderic, or Alteric. Uh, he would always try to get um, Alderic to tank his Gruul's Lair raids, and Alderic was innocent. I remember that quite well. And it was uh, many, many, many years ago. I'm on Thrall, yeah. Thrall server, man. Yeah, it's just like... The game is just so competitive now, and it's built completely around competitive gameplay to the extent that I just, like, is is it even fun anymore? Like, that's the question that, like, I would ask, and, like, I don't really think that it is. It's just not, like, it's just so competitive and so sweaty that it's just not even fun.
WoW caters to the hardcore gamers that uh, that no one wants to waste uh, water their time. Yeah, I mean, esports nerds, gatekeeping RPG nerds. Yeah, it's just like everything in, in WoW. Like, I've done this many times, right? It's like you go over to the, you know, you look at somebody playing WoW, and you look at retail WoW, like what's happening in this game, and you can't even tell what's happening on the screen sometimes. Like, there's just so many things happening simultaneously. It's exhausting. Players are leaving in droves. I don't know if they are or not, but I'm just speaking from my perspective and what I think about the game. And I think that a lot of people agree with me. I mean, is retail dying? I mean, I don't know. People say retail's doing pretty well. And it's like, that's great. But like, all, all, like I've come to the realization that I am not the target audience for Retail WoW anymore. I'm not. They did not make that game for me. It's too hardcore now. Yeah, it's just, and it's hardcore in a way that's not fun. Like, I have no problem being hardcore. Like, I've put, since Grand Blue has come out, I have 400 hours in Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. Now, to be fair, most of that is AFK time. Most of it is AFK time, but I have no problem playing a game and taking it really seriously if I feel like I'm having fun in the game. But the problem is like, I'm not like, why would I do that? And wow. Like Monster Hunter. Yeah. Like look at how much time I put into Monster Hunter. Like I played Monster Hunter for what? Like a month? And like, what's the time I put on that game? 170 hours. That's insane. That's a lot of time. I was playing that game like fucking eight hours a day. It's just too much, man. It's too sweaty. It's not fun. Yeah, it, it's just not. Like, I don't know what else I can say, but I think this has been, like, a huge problem in the game for a long time. And, like, I think that the game needs a complete reset. Like, that's really what I was coming down to and, like, I wanted to talk about more is, like, I think that they need to totally reset WoW. There's too many buffs, there's too many debuffs, there's too many mount, there's too many everything in the game. It's just too complicated. It's too bloated. Like, it's been too bloated for like 10 years. Like, it's just too much.